multi variable calculus is delicious. Today we're going to learn how to parameterize a surface, but not just any surface, a torus, which you may know as a donut shape. When we parameterize a curve, we only need one variable, t. However, when we parameterize a surface, we need a second variable, which we'll call x. Now, uh, to understand how we're going to parameterize a surface, we're going to first need to get an intuitive understanding of what a torus is. A torus is essentially a circle being rotated around the z-axis. As it rotates around, it scoops up an area forming the shape of a donut. We know how to parameterize a circle, and a torus is just a circle rotated in a circle. So parameterizing this shape won't be too difficult. If you remember, we parameterize the circle by taking a fixed radius and rotating that radius around a point. This interval from 0 to 2 pi will be the interval for our parameters. We will use t to parameterize the donut slice as it goes from 0 around to 2 pi. And we will use s to follow the donut slice as it goes around the circle from 0 to 2 pi. By combining these two parameters, t and s, we get a torus. Now we know how our parameters work, we're going to have to stitch them together mathematically. Today we'll be using the cylindrical coordinate system, which has a theta, r, and z component. The theta component is very easy for us to parameterize. It is the same thing as the s parameter, which follows the donut slice as it goes around the z axis. So therefore, theta equals s. r is a little harder for us to find is a circle rotated around a circle, we can imagine a radius that touches all the centers of the donut slices. And we will call this value A. The actual value of R, however, goes from the outside of the donut slice to the inside. This is because the donut slices are circles with radiuses, which we will call B. So we know r ranges from a minus b to a plus b. Now, we can't be satisfied with knowing just this because we want to parameterize r as a function of s and t. If we look at the bounds, we notice that the sign in front of a does not change, but the sign in front of b does. Let's take a look at a donut slice to understand why. We start at r equals a plus b when t equals zero. But as t increases to pi over two, r decreases to a. When t equals pi, we are at the minimum, r equals a minus b. We need a function that gives us 1 at t equals 0, 0 at t equals pi over 2, and minus 1 at t equals pi. This sounds a lot like cosine. Putting this into our equation, we get r equals a plus b cosine t. Finally, we take a look at the z-axis. We see that z starts at 0, but as t increases to pi over 2, it reaches a maximum of b. As it continues around this circle, it goes back down to 0, and then hits a minimum of minus b at 3 pi over 2. Recalling trigonometry, we realize that z equals b sine t. The parameterization of our torus are these equations, with s and t going from 0 to 2 pi. So there we have it, we've just parameterized a torus. By first getting an intuitive understanding of what a torus is, then creating the parameters to describe its shape, and finally by applying those parameters to our coordinate system, we were able to create a mathematical donut, which isn't as delicious as an actual donut. Until next time. not as delicious as an actual donut. <laughs> oh, come on.